Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, X Stitch and Chill. And I have like a ton of things to show you guys today. I have some FFOs, I've got some new starts, I've got a new craft that I am currently obsessed with. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited to share this update with you guys. I know it's a little longer than what I normally do, but uh, it's been kind of a wild September, just a little bit. I've been like all over the state filming things and it's just it's been a lot so uh, I have been stitching a bunch my husband was out of town so I stitched a bunch while uh, he was gone and um, I love those like guilt-free stitching things like you don't feel like you're supposed to be doing something else <laughs> um, so that's nice um, but yeah, I have a lot to share with you today, but first, if you are new here, my name is Kelsey and this channel is all about cross stitching and the things I like to do while I cross stitch. Um, and yeah, if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. Thanks for being here with me. I am really excited to share all the stuff with you. I know I've said that like three times, but I am like really excited. So if this becomes a long video, I apologize. <laughs> um, but yeah, grab your favorite stitching, grab a drink, and uh, let's 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 get into it. So I kind of stalled on filming this video uh, because I was trying to get um, some finishing done, uh, and I was going to be like really impressed, really impressive, I guess, because I don't really finish a lot of things. I stitch a lot of things and then I stick them in a drawer and they're never seen again. So. Uh, yeah, I really wanted to finish a couple things. So I finished, fully finished two things. So who am I? Um, but I do have plans to finish, um, all of my heart of the seasons stitches. So, um, there's four of those obviously. And, uh, I just ordered the wrong size of the frames. I don't know what my brain was doing. <laughs> I, I ordered eight by eights and I definitely not going to fit in an eight by eight. So I, um, I'm returning those and I ordered some 10 by 10s. So those, those should work. So maybe by my next floss tube, I will be able to share, uh, those with you. Um, they're really like basic, just plain frames. It's not anything exciting. And then I was also going to FFO one of my Christmas stitches since Christmas is right around the corner. I know Halloween people are like shouting at me right now, but <laughs> I'm a Christmas person. So, uh, yeah, my, I, I know what I want to get. I just have to go out and buy it. Um, I'm not going to order that one online because it's just like a plain white frame and that's easy to handle. I can handle that. Um, and then I also have a couple other finishes planned, but, um, just have to like actually do it, you know, like that whole thing. Uh, so it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but I did finish some things. I will finally stop yapping and, um, share them with you. So, uh, the first one, and I just framed these myself and I did not do the best job because I just can't be bothered. So this is kind of an old stitch. Um, I think I finished it last year and I just never did anything with it. But now that Christmas is coming up, I want to use it to display. So, um, this is throne of lies where you sit on a throne of lies, uh, which is designed by me. Um, if you have not seen elf, you're really missing out, <laughs> but that's what this quote is from. Um, you sit on a throne of lies. And it's got Santa's chair and some trees and things. It probably could have done with some backstitching. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> I feel like at some point I was just like, eh, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited to put this one up for the holidays. And um, yeah, I just got like a cheap gold frame from Amazon because... It's really light, so it'll be nice to like hang up or put somewhere. It's fine. Uh, okay, and then the next one that I finish. Oh, so I was finishing the Throne of Lies one, and 
So it came with like a piece of cardboard in the back and I was like, okay, I'll just use this. So I use like, um, what is it? A lacing, the lacing method to, um, frame my stuff. So I just use like whatever's in there and I kind of lace the, um, picture, lace the fabric over that. Um, so the cardboard, I just laced it over it and I, don't know what I was thinking because um, the cardboard is not the size of the opening. It was a little smaller, so uh, you can't really tell, but it's like right on the edge of the glass. Like if you look at the right angle, you'll see that it doesn't like fill up the frame the whole way. <laughs> but after I had spent all that time lacing it and everything, I was like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> So yeah, I it just, it's fine. Uh, okay. So the next one that I finished, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw the frame and I was laughing about how fancy and ornate it was. Um, my daughter picked it out because it is for her stitch and that is for uh curse cat Alistair, which I finally finished, um, and framed. So here he is. I'll show you the stitch a little bit. He turned out very cute. And then my daughter picked out this frame and it is heavy and intricate, <laughs> but it's perfect. It's perfect for Alistair. She's very excited. So, um, this is going to get hung up on the wall and this one did not come with like a piece of cardboard or anything behind it. Um, so I didn't lace it, but I might go get like one of those adhesive, boards like the sticky board that you put it on um just because it's a little like wrinkled still even though I ironed it like 16 times uh, <laughs> it's a little wrinkled a little bit so maybe having the sticky paper would help and then like some of it's like poking out the sides <laughs> welcome to this is why I don't finish anything because <laughs> it's too much work um and I also have to give a shout out to um cross stitch globe because she uh, I put out an SOS on how to wash out the grid from this Ada and uh, she was like boiling water <laughs> and I was like okay um, I guess I didn't wash it hot enough the first time so the second time my sink water gets pretty hot um, I wouldn't say boiling but scalding for sure I had to put gloves on in order to like soak it and everything um, so yeah, I, I eventually, I got the grid out. You can't really, it's not, you can't tell it's there. So, uh, that's good, but it was like really hot water. I could barely, even with the gloves on, I could like barely stick my hand in there and like swish it around. <laughs> so those are my two FFOs and, uh, yeah, I'm feeling very proud of myself and I am looking forward to getting the 10 by 10 frames so I can do, um, all the seasons and then um, looking forward to doing my, my other Christmas one, uh, which is the Tidings of Comfort and Joy, which is by Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, also, Cursed Cat Alistair is by KVO The Stitch on Etsy. And I think I've talked about everything. And here's a cat it wants to hang out with us. Uh, yeah, so those are my two FFOs. Now, <laughs> have some new starts. I know. Uh, since I finished um, Curse Cat Alistair, I was like, okay, I'm going to start another one. So I started one that I've been talking about starting for a while now. And that is Arranging Cacti, which is by Ink Circles. And this is a project I decided I was going to try out linen. So this is a 32 count hibiscus by picture this plus I think but it's very pretty I really like it um so yeah this is my first project that I'm doing on linen and I'm doing it two over two which I've only messed up a few times so go me <laughs> but this is uh where my start is so I'm kind of just like working my way like this over there and yeah, I really like how it's turning out. Um, I don't mind stitching on the linen. I've definitely run into some like 
what are they called? S slubs. Slubs <laughs> in the fabric. Um, and just kind of like worked around them. And then um, also I definitely messed up the whole two over two thing a couple times. I think my tension's a little tight. It might be a little too tight in this hoop, but I'm learning. I'm figuring it out. <laughs> and I'm happy with how it's turning out. I think it'll look good. Um, so yeah. And like, I've been listening to an audiobook and I listened to the audiobook a bunch when I was working on this one. So it's funny, like looking at them, I like think of the book <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, this was happening while I was stitching this. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my new start, Ink Circles, uh, Arranging Cacti and it's on linen and yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm enjoying it. I wouldn't say I hate it, but do I like, am I like a linen convert? Probably not, but <laughs> I do like how linen has a lot of like choices color wise and stuff. So, um, and the 32 counts, not too bad. It's not too like small or anything. Um, I can't imagine doing like 40 count like some people do. That's madness. The next one, I haven't technically actually started it, but I did finish it. <laughs> so it's kind of like a finish and a start all at the same time. Uh, so if you remember, I made this rainbow bridge, which is by uh, Bad Stitched. And I did this one for my brother-in-law and my sister. Uh, they had to put their dog Snowball down last year. Um, around this time and unfortunately they had to put their other elderly dog down a couple weeks ago so I am going to be starting this same stitch over again but for um, the other dog so yeah it, it didn't really like take very long to do so hopefully I can get it done we're celebrating um, his birthday beginning like on November 4th or something like that so like the first weekend of November um so I want to have it done by then but we'll see I think I think I can get it done and then I can give like both of them to them um to him you know so uh yeah poor the poor hokey dog um but he was very old, so he was like 13 or something. So was Snowball. Snowball was 16, um, Hulk was 13. So they were older dogs. Uh, and I am stitching this on Dark Reflection, which is by Mystic Fabrics, and it is a 16 count Ada. And I really like this um, fabric. It's like soft and pretty. I like it. Highly recommend. Okay, so those are my new starts and I am planning another new start, which we'll get into when we get to future plans. Um, but now I can talk about my whips. Um, there's a few whips that I worked on that I'm not gonna get out because I've got like less than a hundred stitches done on them. So it's not worth showing you. I'll show you when I actually like put some earnest time and energy into it. Um, but the first one is, uh, Deathly Hollows, which is art by DJ Vigo, and it is charted by Thread Geeks. And I have been working on this one for like two years now. I think at the beginning of 2025, it will officially be two years. I think I started it in 2022. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a long time coming for this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am. I'm almost finished with the blue color on this page. So um, anyway, this is what it looked like last time. And there's not so much confetti, so it's a little easier to stitch now, but this is what it looks like now. So all of this space right here is black and I don't know why I decided to save it till the end, but, cause I hate myself. <laughs> So yeah, this is all black and it goes like way over here too. And then uh, these guys will get filled in with black, but a lot of this is just another like dark blue. There's just a few more like confetti stitches up in here to get done. Um, and then over here is a bunch more of like this swirly 
blue stuff. Um, so yeah, there's still quite a bit to do. I think I'm like 70% finished. So I wanted to get it done this year, but it's, it's not happening. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, but I still really like working on it. It's really nice. Like down here, it's just like the bars of blue. So it's like a little less um, confetti heavy and then like it's kind of difficult in this spot because these are supposed to be like dead trees in the background so uh, it's very fiddly back there with the dark and the lighter blues but yeah it'll get done eventually uh next time I pull it so once I finish like I'll probably finish like all of this right here up to this brother and then I'll move the hoop and I think I'll start up here um, and finish that page. And then it will just be mindless black stitching. <laughs> I can finish it. Uh, but yes, I love how it's turning out. So next time I take it out of the hoop, I will show you guys. Um, I'll take a picture or something so you can see the whole thing. Uh, so yeah, that is Deathly Hollows. Plugging away on that one. The next one is uh, Nostalgia Tarot, which is by The Witchy Stitcher. Um, it started out as a Patreon one, but she's they get released also not in her Patreon, in her shop. Um, so you can, you too, can be a part of this giant stitch along. <laughs> um, it's not a stitch along, she says that. Uh, but I am working on the Empress card, which will look like this when it's finished. And um, last time I think I was still working through the top. Um, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of working through the top part of the card so I can move the frame. Um, I'll probably be moving the frame very soon. Maybe by the next floss tube. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so this is what it looks like now. So I've been really filling out up here. Uh, there's like the white border that goes around and then um, there's black stitching too. Uh, I am using the 310 Toil for the black and I don't know if you can really tell, especially on camera. In real life, it is very subtle um, because like all around this crown is the etoil and then like, I haven't quite finished the possum, but like all over here and stuff is the black etoil. And it just, it's just, it's fine. <laughs> I'll keep using it just for consistency's sake, but I don't think it really like makes a big difference. It's not like super sparkly or anything. Um, but yeah, I just got to get maybe like the trolls hair done. The black border under here, is that done? And that's the other thing with the black <laughs> toil is that sometimes I'm like, did I do that stitch? What stitch am I on? So it looks like maybe there's one more. Yes. No, I don't know. Maybe I did stitch it. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, the, the black border is pretty much done and the white border is pretty much done. So I think I just need to do like troll hair and a few other things. So yeah. <laughs> really, really hard to tell where I am on this one, uh, especially with the black stitching. I think I stitched it. It's just, yeah. And then sometimes I'm like, did I cross that one? I can't tell. I can't see. Does it look like it was crossed? <laughs> and I just, I have a really hard time, but it's fine. I think with like my actual like stitching light on it, it it's a little easier to tell, but um, in here, in the natural window light, it's not the best. All right, and then the last whip I worked on, uh, you probably saw on Instagram, but I um, wanted to do Halloween stitching, which I am not a huge Halloween person, like I said, um, but 
I figured I would work on something spooky that I already had started and needed some love. So I am working on Satan's Marshmallows, which is by the Witchy Stitcher as well. And um, I just, I love that it's marshmallows on fire. <laughs> Whenever uh, my daughter and my husband make s'mores, that's what they like to do. They like to like light the marshmallow on fire, blow it out, and then they pull like the, like it gets like crispy outside and they pull the crispy outside off and eat that. And then there's still like marshmallow left. And so then they light that on fire and then blow it out and then they do it again. And so they like eat it in layers. Um, Cause they're weird like that, but <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's all good. Anyway. So um, I don't know what it looked like last time. I don't even know if I showed you guys, but I hadn't even finished the border. So um, if I didn't show it last time, I'm not going to go back and find a picture for it. So <laughs> you just have to use your imagination because this is what it looks like now. So I finished the border and on my Instagram, I put um, like a little, I made a reel about how I was keeping count so that it would all match up. Um, I basically just used an extra needle and like marked my last stitch, which was the 10th stitch and then um, did 10 more stitches and then I moved it to the top of the 10 stitch and so on and so forth. So. Yeah, and then I did just a smidgen more of a different red up in the corner, and that is all I did on here. So I didn't get a ton finished, but I I have no plans to finish that immediately, anyways. So not not too stressed on it. Okay, I had to do a little rearranging here. Like I said, we have a lot to talk about. Um, so that is all the cross stitching stuff. Um, besides my cross stitching haul, which I guess I can do now. Yeah, I'll do that now. I'll do all the crusted stuff and then we can talk about my new obsession. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, nothing like hyper focusing. Um, now I got it. Now I got to switch gears. I got to think about it. Okay. So, um, I did get the fabric for, um, the tropical flowers, which is by Charlie's official store. Um, they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to stitch one of their patterns and um, talk about it on here. And I'm very excited to do that for them. Um, so I ended up going with the fiber on a whim cream and sugar because I think the other one was through the stones. I think it was picture this plus no. I think it also was fiber on a whim. I don't know. I don't know what it was. But anyway, um, I ended up going with cream and sugar, which looks like this. And from the photo online, it's definitely not as pink as I thought it would be. It's a little more brown. So I'm not sure I'm in love with that. I think I would rather it be a little pinker. Um... But I don't know, I might just suck it up and deal with it because I don't want to order more fabric. I'm, I'm supposed to not be spending money. <laughs> and here we are, I cannot, yeah, like $20 fabric every time and then not use it. So um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think I'll probably just live with it and go forth. But uh, yeah, so that was for uh, the tropical flowers, which, I'm going to stitch and turn into a pillow is the um, plan uh, and it's it's about 17,000 stitches I think so it shouldn't take like forever but it probably will take a while um, I'm not like putting a deadline on it or anything um, here's some of the colors that I'll be stitching it in um, yeah. I picked out the colors that are the most amount of stitches at this point, like anything over 200 stitches. Um, the colors are in here 
well, most of the colors are in here um, so that I can I kind of just want to like start there and I'll probably be doing it like cross country stitching by color because um, I think that's how I like to do it <laughs> and yeah so that's for that one um, and then the only other haul that I have is uh, if you are on Instagram and you are a part of the cross stitch community at all, you have probably heard about Jody at Unconventional X Stitch. She um, unfortunately had a devastating fire uh, at her home, which destroyed not only her entire home and everything she owns, but also her entire business. Um, she provides cross stitch kits and charts and everything and everything is gone so um as a community we're kind of all pulling together to try and help her out um so i bought two charts pdf charts if you want to support her definitely order a pdf chart there will be no kits um so yes obviously um and i got a few that i had been like that have been sitting on my wish list um that i just was like oh well i have too many other things so i'm not gonna buy them but um i did end up going and buying those um to give a little support to jody um i know that it's not a lot but at least it's something and i hope it can help her um rebuild her business after um all this nonsense um so i got a cozy evening i think that's what it's called cozy evening two i don't know what one looks like but this is cozy evening two <laughs> and i saw this one i think on like an instagram ad and i was like oh, i must have it and it's just so beautiful it's one that will take forever it's huge <laughs> and it's beautiful though i love it um, and then I also got a smaller one um, because most of her charts are full coverage charts and she's got some really cool, really cool charts. Like it was hard to just be like, okay, I'm buying two. <laughs> uh, but the other one that I got is astronaut and scuba diver holding hands, I think. Yep, that's what it is. Astronaut, scuba diver, holding hands. Um, and I got this one not only because I love the astronaut and the scuba diver like vibe um, and the sunflowers and stuff. Uh, we have a big art poster in our dining room, which is like two astronauts laying in a field of flowers holding hands. So um, I thought it was kind of cute to like make a little mini version of it ish kind of. So um, I will actually be starting this one soon. Um, there are several ways that the community is supporting Jodi. Um, so one is just buying patterns from her. Uh, and then I've seen a GoFundMe for her. I'm not sure who's organizing it because I clicked on it and then I like closed the app for something and then I went back and I could never find it again. Just the story of my life. And, um, so if you've seen that, you can please leave the information in the comments for other people if they want to find it. Um, and then also Kaylee Tent, Tent, Kaylee Tent Stitch is doing a giveaway. I think she's doing it with a couple other people, but I can't remember who the other people are. I just remember it's specifically Kaylee Tent Stitch um, where they're doing a giveaway and you have to follow Unconventional X Stitch. Um, buy one of her patterns and start it before i think it's the 4th november 4th november 1st um beginning of november first couple days i think and um yeah so if you start it then you're entered in a giveaway and the prizes are really great so definitely worth um buying one of her charts and getting it started uh, before then and also it goes back to when the fire was which was October 7th so um, if you somehow bought and started an unconventional cross stitch after on or after the 7th then you can be entered in it as well um, so there's a hashtag but I don't know what that is either because my brain is mush most of the time uh, yeah so that's all the haul that I had as far as cross stitch um, like I said I'm trying not to like 
buy a bunch of things, but it's really hard <laughs> to not do that. Um, and it's like every now and then you're like, well, it's only like 20 bucks. Uh, it's, it's only $10. Uh, it's only, and then that adds up to like $500. So yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get into my new favorite thing. Uh, hold on. I just need, I need a drink. I'm doing a lot of talking. <sighs> Don't normally talk this much. <laughs> okay. So, um, this is another one of those things, like how I got into stitching full coverage. I saw people doing it and I thought they're crazy. I can't believe they're doing this. This is madness. This is insane. And then I started doing full coverage and I was like, I love this. This is amazing. I did to do this all the time. <laughs> and yeah, so uh, I had seen a couple people talking about English paper piecing. I first heard about it from the Diddy Stitcher, Helen, and um, she had talked about it. I think I'm pretty sure it was her. Um, but then Beck stitches everything. Uh, for a while, she had her um, English paper piecing quilt behind her as like a backdrop. And I was like, she's crazy. That is huge. I can't believe she hand sewed all of that together and everything. Um, and then here we are. I'm, I've been doing English paper piecing. <laughs> um, so I bought all the little hexagons. I just got like ones that are already made off of Amazon uh, because I didn't want to deal with that nonsense. Um, I guess I have a Cricut, so I could have like gotten a template and just cut it on the Cricut, but I didn't think of that. And that would still, there's like 400 in the pack that I got. So I just, I didn't want to deal with all that. So <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, and then I bought a jelly roll over here, which we'll get into. Um, and then I was like, you know what, Kelsey, maybe you should like slow your roll and like practice and like see if you even know how this works and if it'll look good. So I did a practice one. So I got to some cheap fabric from, well, not even cheap, it's Singer brand, but, um, I got some fabric from Joann's and just started to make hexagons and sew them together. And I made this little flower and it's got like lemons and sunflowers and super cute. So I did this one and I took all the papers out, which I don't think I was supposed to take the papers out of these ones on the edge yet, but don't tell. Uh, um, so yeah, this was pretty easy to put together. Um, and I loved like how it was very mindless and very satisfying. Cause like you stitch them all together and then you make this and you're like, Oh, look, look what I did. <laughs> um, this obviously is not fully finished. So I think what I'm going to do is it's kind of like pot holder size. When I told my husband I was gonna do this, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this English paper piecing, paper piecing thing and I'm gonna make a quilt. And he was like, yeah? And I was like, or maybe a pot holder <laughs> because a quilt is very large. Um, so yeah, he kind of made fun of me, but it's fine. I made fun of myself. So he's like, that's one of your best ideas yet. <laughs> So I am going to, uh, I think make this into like a little pot holder. Um, I'm going to back it and maybe applique it onto some fabric. I don't know. I'm still trying like to figure out what I want to do with it. I know I want to make a pot holder. I just don't know how to get from this to pot holder. So we're going to figure it out though and I'm excited. So I made this one and then I was like, oh, well now I can like make hexagons for the actual quilt. And then I was like, well, you can't just have one pot holder. You have to have two pot holders. So I am making this one, which I haven't finished um, sewing all my hexagons together yet. But um, this one in the center, this daisy right there, that's the hexagon that's gonna go Come on friends, 
around the outside of this one. So, um, yeah, I just got one of those packs that's like five different fabrics and there's like half a, not even half a yard, quarter of a yard in them. They like come in a little pack. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to do that and see how it goes. This is not really my style. It probably will be given away <laughs> once I finish it, if it's like decent enough. Cause I mean, I could also make a really nice little like trivet too, like for your a little doily for your couch. No. Um, so yeah, I have been working on that and I have a cross stitch box since I moved a lot of my bobbins into a bigger box. Um, I had an empty one, so I've been putting all the English paper piecing stuff in here. Um, so that's my experiment is pot holders. I need to go get some batting for the inside. Um, I definitely have heard people say, make sure you use cotton. <laughs> Don't use a polyester if you're going to put something hot on it, which good plan. I know they make like, um, I was watching one tutorial and they made, they used like this thermal, like it's made for pot holders basically. Um, but we're not going to get that fancy and expensive. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, yeah. So that's the test subject. And then I opened, I opened the jelly roll, which is a bad idea, but, um, this Oh, last one um, is the fabric that I'm going to use for the actual quilt. It's really hard to show um, without unrolling all of it, but it's called Cottage Core, and it's very um, cottage corey. It's mostly like florals and muted colors, and that's my jam. So, put that back there. And then this is, this is one of them, this nice little pink flowers. So yeah, I'm going to start like cutting and making hexagons out of these eventually. And then that will be the quilt. And I think I'm not going to do like flowers, like, like I'm doing for this one. I think I'm just going to do like random, like make sure no colors are touching and put it all together see what happens um yeah so don't expect to finish on that anytime in the near future but uh, just know you're gonna hear about it because I have really been enjoying it it's been nice it's just so like simple and mindless and like just the it's nice I really like it it's great um so yeah if you have done English paper facing, paper piecing. <laughs> I can never say it. EPP. If you've ever done EPP, I'd love to hear about your experience. So um, yeah, leave me a comment because I want to hear about it. Another thing that I really like about the EPP is like, it's very simple to just take these with you and sew a few together. Like um, while I'm picking my kid up from school or, um, doctor's office waiting for her to get out of an activity or something. So, um, yeah, it's really easy to kind of like carry around. I know people have like little pouches that they just stick in their purse. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's really nice. Um, before I get into chill things, I forgot I wanted to mention a couple new floss tubers that I have been watching. Um, the first is the night owl stitcher and, um, they're both full coverage people that I am shouting out right now. Um, so the night owl stitcher, she is, um, a bunch of, she does full coverage, lots of really pretty projects, lots of stuff going on. Um, and then the other is the 50 needle stitcher and, um, she does a lot of full coverage stuff too. And, um, they, she got her name because of how she stitches. So she like keeps the needles. So she does like parking method and row rows, but she keeps needles on everything. So it's like, she's got 50 needles going at the same time. Um, so yeah, very unique way of working and really cool. So I have been, 
I enjoying watching those. I think they only have one or two out for both of those. So um, yeah, it's, it's a good one though. So that is everything that I have as far as stitching things um, and new stitching things. So uh, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I'm almost to 2000 subscribers. So if you aren't subscribed, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button so that uh, I could reach that 2000. I'm really hoping to reach it by the end of the year. Um, so yeah be very helpful um but also thank you for liking and uh, i love to hear your comments and hear about what you guys are working on um and yeah so thank you so much for watching and now we are going to get into the chill things so i mentioned that my husband has been out of town uh and i have been binge watching nobody wants this which is on netflix with kristen bell and adam brody uh and it is amazing i am obsessed it's so good. Um, if you haven't watched it, you should watch it. It's very cute, very romantic, very sweet. It's a good one. It's a good one. I really like it. Um, definitely watch that if, if you like those kind of things. Um, I finished uh, Ruthless Vows, which is the second book of Divine Rivals. Uh, I finished that on my way to Aspen, which was a whole vibe. Um, so we have this account in Colorado on Instagram called I 70 things. And, uh, it's basically just an account where people tag it of them sitting in traffic on I 70 or a car on fire on I 70. Um, but this is like the main way to get to the mountains and the ski areas and everything is I-70. So they're doing a really big construction project in one area. Um, it's like this big hill and they're making it less of a big hill, I guess, with less curvies. I don't know. Just, you know, a way for people to make it easier for them to go 80 miles an hour down a hill, uh, into a sharp left curve. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, I'm getting off subject. So I was up in Aspen for the weekend and it was gorgeous. This was the view from the couple's ceremony. I mean, you can't beat it. But anyway, it took me six hours to drive up there. Um, it's normally about four, a little less than four. Uh, and then it took me six hours to go back. So that was fun. <laughs> basically just all day in the car and then one day of rigorous video shooting and then back in the car so yeah um i did take uh independence pass which i've never done before so it was nice because i'd never been to aspen so that was fun i've lived in colorado most of my life and uh, i never taken independence pass um through so and then i went by twin lakes and i've never been to twin lakes so it was kind of nice but it was also like i just i'm tired of being in the car <laughs> um so yeah that was fun but um i finished ruthless vows on the way up there uh and it was so good i absolutely loved it no notes um and then on the way back, I was like, okay, I will listen to the second book in the uh, Shatter Me series, which is Unravel Me, um, which is a series I really like, but I actually read the physical books the first time through. Um, and when I was listening to the first one, the narrator's voice was kind of annoying, but like, it was fine. Um, and then I started listening to the second one and I do not remember all the whining that was going on oh my god <laughs> she's so whiny it was like i couldn't take it anymore i was like i just gotta push through i know that this is part's gonna end but it was just so much like why is no one telling me what's going on and everyone has a secret and why blah. and i just I couldn't take it anymore. So I stopped it. <laughs> um, and when I was in a place with service, I downloaded a new audiobook and I ended up getting um, The Fates Divide, which is the second book in the Carve the Mark series, which is by Veronica Roth. Yes. She also wrote the Divergent series. 
Um, I liked these two books a lot more than the Divergent series, but I, I think the Divergent movies kind of ruined Divergent. So <laughs> there's that. But anyway, um, so I just finished that like last night um, and it was really good. I just, I don't know if it's the guy's voice who voices Akos, which is the main guy character, uh, cause it's a multi POV. Um, but every time it was Akos chapter, he has like the deepest, like, like it's a rumbly voice that like you want to like fall asleep to. <laughs> uh, I don't, I haven't fallen asleep while listening to it, but, um, I did really enjoy the story and, um, it's a really good one. It's really good. Uh, yeah, it's like space sci-fi fantasy, fun stuff. Um, so the first one is Carve the Mark, and then I listen to The Fates Divide. Uh, and now the next audiobook I'm going to listen to is The Game's God's Play, which is by Abigail Owen. Uh, it's a new book, so um, I don't think I've read any of her other books. I have no idea what it's about. I just saw it at Target and was like, oh, that looks like a fun cover. <laughs> and, and then I saved it on my holds. So here we go. I'll let you know how it is. <laughs> uh, but I have been watching um, a little TV besides just Nobody Wants This. Um, Only Murders in the Building I've been watching. Uh, I think a new episode came out today. Uh, I think I've watched seven. So I think eight comes out today. Uh, there was one really weird episode, which, I mean, I went to film school. I can appreciate it, but it was just weird. <laughs> um, if you watch it, you know, you know what episode I'm talking about. Um, so that one's interesting. My mom was, me and my mom were talking about it and um, we were like, oh, well, I was like, well, there's only eight episodes. This is the, has to be the last one. And she was like, well, Siri says it has 10. <laughs> and I was like, well, Siri knows everything. So obviously it must be 10 episodes, but it's like, it seems like they've pretty much like solved it. So I can't imagine like how many more twists there would be in the next three episodes. So I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. But yeah, I have been watching Only Murders in the Building, which is a great show. Um, if you go back and watch them, they have great guest stars. Um, this year, this season they have Ava Longoria, um, Eugene Levy, and Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> um, and then they've had Paul Rudd, they've had Meryl Streep has also been in the last couple seasons. Um, so yeah, they have great guest stars. It's, it's really fun. Um, and the three of them are really cute together. I, I love it. I've also been watching the Great British Baking Show, obviously, and um, that's been dramatic, I guess, in the first couple weeks. So I don't know what day those come out, but every now and then I'm like, oh, I wonder if there's a new episode on. So I've only watched the first two, so I don't know if the third one's out. Um, and then I also watched a movie, I think it's called The Lottery. It was on Prime with Aquafina and John Cena. <laughs> And, uh, it was delightful. It was great. You know, it's exactly what you think it's going to be <laughs> with those two people in it. Um, but basically like you win the lottery and if you're participating in this lottery, uh, all the other people participating in the lottery can kill you and get the money. Or you can, uh, if you survive, you, you get the money. So yeah, it's very interesting. Um, it was good though. It's, it's about exactly what you would expect. And then finally, I kind of watched Rings of Power. <laughs> like I watched it like intermittently when my husband would watch it. So like if I was sitting on the couch and he started it and I was like going to bed in a half hour, I wouldn't really complain. So I'd watch a half hour of it. Um, so I was kind of in and out and everything. Um, so I kind of watched it and we finished it and interesting Lord of the Rings is not really my fandom <laughs> um, I don't I don't live there so yeah it's fine though 
all fine. Um, we spent quality time together sitting on the couch, ignoring each other, watching TV. So that's really all that matters. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then I'll start my new audiobook, uh, finish Only Murders in the Building, and I think I only have, I think I have like three episodes left of Nobody Wants This. So uh, I want to finish that, and yeah, that is all the chill things that are happening in my life while I am stitching things. So uh, yeah, if you have made it this far, you really win. Uh, Thank you for watching and listening to all of my ramblings. Um, and again, I'm almost to the 2000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed and you watched all the way to this point, you should just subscribe because like, obviously either you fell asleep or <laughs> you uh, actually enjoyed watching this. Um, you're stitching, you're in the zone. Uh, Anyway, I would just really appreciate it. I really want to see that number, that 2000. It just, it feels, feels good. Um, yes. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next update video. Um, hopefully with a couple of new starts and hopefully with some pot holders. <laughs> and it will be a good time for everybody. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.